In today's video, I'm going to show you how I revolutionised Real Sociedad and helped them take their place amongst the Spanish elite. We joined the club at the start of a brand new save game. Now in real life, Real Sociedad are having a fine season. They are flying high in La Liga and are currently sat in third place, only behind the big two of Barcelona and Real Madrid. So the short term objective is obviously going to be to replicate what they are doing in real life. But the long term aim for this save is going to be to try and establish ourselves as the best team in Spain. A quick look at the club's history reveals that they do have some silverware in the trophy cabinet. If we go over and look at what they have won, they have two La Liga titles coming in 1981 and 1982, which means that the club haven't won the league for 40 years. They have three Copa del Rey titles, 1909, 1987 and 2020. That is the most recent trophy that they have won. They have three La Liga Smart Bank, which is the second division of Spanish football. They won that in 1949, 1967 and most recently in 2010. And they have one Supercopa de España in 1980. Two. If we look over their recent history in terms of their league positions, uh, 02 03 they finished as high as second in the league for the following season, falling away to 15th. They then declined to the point of getting relegated in the 06 07 season. They then spent a couple of seasons outside of La Liga for getting promoted back in 2009 2010. They then finished 15th climbed all the way back up to 4th in the 12-13 season for another drop-off, saw them come back in the 16-17 season, finishing 6th, then finished 13th before they climbed back up to a height of 5th in 2021 and they most recently finished 6th in La Liga in 21-22. This is the tactic that I'm going to be using for all five seasons of the Real Sociedad Revolution. It's an original tactic created by myself called the F84 Broken Edge. If you're interested in the tactic, there will be a standalone video on the channel where there will be a link in the description that you can get your hands on the tactic. But for today's video, I've loaded the assistant manager's best 11 into the tactic. We're going to go through some of the positions and show you probably where we can upgrade and also where we are happy at the start of the revolution. Kicking off with Ramiro at the back, he's a solid goalkeeper, no need to do anything drastic early on in the revolution with that position. We then have Rico, Lenormand, El Estondo and Garathabal at the back. Uh, Lenormand and El Estondo are pretty much the similar types of players to each other, they complement each other well tall strong centre backs and again another couple of players that are good at the start of the game to build a spine off of we then move into the midfield this is probably where the team is a little bit light we have Marino and Zubimendi Zubimendi is a decent enough player I think for the short term maybe in the long term both of these are going to get replaced on the left hand side we have Ayrathabel he's a player who is well on his way to being a club legend came up through the ranks in Real Sociedad B has now made 224 appearances for the first team and has also broken into the Spanish national team. Fortunately for me, starts the game off injured. On the right hand side we have Mendes to complement him. In behind our main striker is David Silva, a legend of the game. Played for Manchester City winning the Premier League, also played for Valencia and is now at Sociedad. I think he is a player in the twilight of his career at the age of 36, definitely not one for the future and he's a player that will need a replacement signing as soon as we can. And then at the top of the pitch we have Umar Sadiq. He's all about pace and power, a strong direct forward with 16 pace, 16 acceleration, 14 dribbling, 14 finishing. Uh, at the age of 25, he has played seven times for Nigeria and scored one goal. And we know that he can score goals in La Liga because he has played 74 times for Almeria and scored 38 goals before he arrived at Sociedad. There are a few other players that are worth a mention. We have Takafusa Kubo. He is a Japanese player, 21 years old, rated very highly, was at Real Madrid, also so has played for Barcelona which is a little bit strange but uh, he's now at Sociedad and I think he's one of the players that we need to build around possibly going to be that player that bridges the gap with David Silva we also have Ilara Mendy who is another club legend went to Real Madrid for a short stint but spent most of his time at Sociedad in professional football and we also have Kari Kaburu he's another player who was a Big wonder kid candidate for FM22, one maybe for the long term at the age of 19 that we can nurture into being a striker if Sadiq 
asks to leave or if we look to replace him further down the line and then finally the other player that we have is Sorloth currently on loan from Red Bull Leipzig whether he plays well enough to force himself upon us in terms of us wanting to pick him up is one thing I'm not too sure of obviously with Sadiq at the top and as I said Karikaburu could be developed into that position whether we sign Sorloth in the long term I'm not too sure but we certainly have him for the first season so it's a squad that is actually really good for its depth I do think we might be a little bit light in the wing back area and certainly we'll be looking to sign some central midfielders in the competitions tab for the upcoming season, we have three competitions to compete in. We take part in La Liga Santander, where we are expected to qualify for the Europa League. In terms of the Europa League, which we are already in, they want us to reach the quarterfinals at a minimum. And in the Copa del Rey, they want us to reach the fifth round at a minimum. If we go into the Liga Santander and look at the season preview, you can see that we are predicted to finish in sixth place. We are 50 to one shots. And I think we're going to have our work cut out to try and break those elite clubs at the moment the Real Madrid's the Barcelona's and the Atletico's but in the first season we will give it our absolute best shot that then is a brief overview of Real Sociedad at the start of the game. Now, if you've seen one of the Revolution videos before, you'll know that we don't have the summer transfer window turned on. That means that the earliest we can bring in reinforcements is in the January transfer window. So let's jump to the end of the first season and see how we get on against the big boys in Spain. We have now jumped to the end of the first season. Now, as I said, we did not have that initial summer transfer window on. So everything you're about to see has happened in the January transfer window. We have had some players join the club. But firstly, we're going to show you the couple of major transfers that happened for players leaving. First of which was Ander Baranchia. He left to go to Tottenham for £44.5 million. And Mikel Moreno was the other player to follow him out of the door. He also went to the Premier League to go to Wolverhampton Wanderers for £39 million pounds now moving on to players who have joined the club bearing in mind that when we did the club introduction i did mention that we had good squad depth meant that i actually spent money on players that i think we can develop for the future the first of which is trilly he has come from deportivo la coruña a young spaniard who plays as a wing back on the right hand side and i think he'll slot quite nicely into our defense we then made a move for Tobias Gullickson. He's another young player who can play as an attacking option, either coming in from the left or playing behind the main striker as an attacking midfielder. He cost us just £3 million. Up next, we signed a direct replacement for Mikel Moreno. This is Isaac Johannesson. He is a direct midfielder who plays through the centre, can also play on the wide right. He cost £13.5 million from FC Kubenhaun. And the final player that we bought in in the January transfer window was Noah Okafor. Paid £12 million to Red Bull Salzburg for his services. He's a young Swiss player who can play off of the left or off of the right. And I think he gives us a real threat at the top end of the pitch. So that's the players out. Those are the players in. The next question, as always, is was it money well spent? How did we get on in the first season? And the answer to that question is yes, the money seems to have been well spent. We have managed to finish fourth in our first season in La Liga and we have comfortably outperformed our season preview. If we break down that La Liga Santander campaign before we come back to the other competitions, we can see we finished fourth, we played 38, we won 22, we drew 7, we lost 9. Had a 27 goal difference and we finished on 73 points that's only two behind atletico although we did finish miles behind real madrid who won the league looking at some of the stats sadiq was our top scorer with 28 goals garatabal and kubo both getting 11 assists each looking at the europa league we were knocked out in the knockout playoff round by fc kubenhaun if we go in and have a little look at the group stage which is where i believe we entered if we look at the all groups, uh, we played against Arsenal, Larnacas and Midgetland. We finished second in our group, scoring 12 points, finishing three behind Arsenal. And that qualified us for the knockout playoff round where unfortunately we were drawn against Kubenhaun and they beat us 5-3 on aggregate. In the Copa del Rey, we managed to reach the final. If we go back and have a little breakdown of how we got on from the second round. So we played against Deportivo and we won 2-0. In the third round, we played against Las Palmas. We beat them 3-1. In the fourth round, we played against Seville. We beat them 3-1. 
In the quarterfinals, we played against Raul Betis. We beat them 3-2. In the semifinals, we played against Valencia. We beat them 3-2 on aggregate. And then in the final, we came up against Real Madrid. And unfortunately, we lost 2-1 to finish runners-up. Sadiq did get another six goals in this competition. Kubo got four assists, as did Mendes. So a great first season sees us qualify for the Champions League in the next season. And it's firmly a solid building block for us to build upon in the first year of the five in this revolution. A quick look at the finances heading into season two shows that the club is in a good financial state. We have £93.8 million in the bank. They're going to let us spend £48.9 million on new player signings and we have £1 million in the wage budget. Looking at the best 11 then going into season two, we can see there's not much change from the start of the game. Uh, we still have Ramiro in goal, Rico, Lenormand, Elastondo and Garathabal at the back. Zubel Dia now joins Zubimendi in the middle with Marino being allowed to leave to go to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Garathabal, Kubo now comes in and replaces David Silva and Mendes on the right-hand side. And Sadiq is still our striker at the top of the pitch. So after a season where we bought players to develop for the future, we now have a good amount of money in the bank to go and try and make improvements. Let's see what happens as we jump to the end of Season 2. Jumping forwards to the end of Season 2, we actually have to reflect on something that happened earlier on in the season. And as you can see, our main man, our main striker, Umar Sadiq, had his head turned. He is now a PSG player and they paid £25 million for the player. The other major transfer to happen in terms of players leaving was Robin Lenormand. A £6 million bid from Valencia, plus the fact he was unhappy at the club, led to him leaving for Valencia. So with those players leaving the club, we obviously needed to go and get reinforcements. The first player that we signed was a direct replacement for Robin Lenormand. We bought Joe Rodon from Wren for £15 million. We then went and splashed the cash on Cole Palmer from Manchester City. £41 million was enough to secure the services of the 22-year-old Englishman. Next up, we signed a replacement for Umar Sadiq. We went out and bought Lorenzo Colombo. Paid £10.5 million for him from his parent club, AC Milan. I think this one could turn into an absolute bargain. The final player that we bought in Season 2 was Sander Berg. We paid Sheffield United £16.5 million for his services. I think he is a player who is absolutely fantastic. He's going to slot right into our midfield and hopefully help us to shore up the middle of the park. So, those are the players that have left. We've shown you the reinforcements that have arrived. The question now is, can we improve on what we did in Season 1? Can we finish any higher than 4th? We certainly did build upon that building block, but unfortunately we came agonisingly close to winning La Liga. We finished second behind Barcelona. We finished level on points. They had a better goal difference, plus they were better than us in the head-to-head. -head. If we break that competition down first, we can see this time around we played 38 games. We won 29. We drew 5. We lost 4. We had a goal difference of 56 and we finished on 92 points. We finished 10 points clear of Real Madrid and did not win the league. And that is because Barcelona finished on 70 goal difference. And as you can see here, we lost 4-1 to them in the away game and we drew with them in the home game. So either way, even if we had had a better goal difference, I think La Liga goes down to head-to-heads as well. So we still would not have won the league, but it was agonisingly close and it was thrilling to be in the fight all the way to the end. End. Uh, in this season, we had Okafor as our top goal scorer. He got 23 goals. Kubo got an uh, average rating of 7.37 and he got 16 assists, perfectly slotting into David Silva's role. So, in the Champions League, we managed to get through to the round of 16 and we were knocked out by Chelsea. If we break that down and go into the group stages, if we look at all of the groups, we can find ourselves in the bottom group. We were drawn with Manchester City, Red Bull Leipzig and Napoli. We finished second in the group on 11 points. Playing six, winning three, drawing two, losing one. Had a goal difference of five. We then progressed into the round of 16 where we were drawn against Chelsea. And unfortunately, we lost 2-0 on aggregate across the two legs. In the Copa del Rey, this time we were knocked out in the fourth round by Alaves. If we go in and show you from the second round on once again, uh, we got drawn in the 
In fact, we didn't go in the second round because we were in the Champions League. So in the third round, we faced off against Rathing Santander. We beat them 4-1 in the third round. We then came up against Alaves in the fourth round, rotated the squad because of the expanded calendar for the team, and we lost 2-1. We also played in the Supercopa de España, and we finished as runners-up. We lost to Real Madrid 2-1 once again. Kubo got two goals in that competition as we got to the final. So a fantastic second season, and we used that building block from season one to project ourselves even further. Once again, qualifying for the Champions League, agonisingly missing out on our first league title in over 40 years. A look at our finances going into season three show that the board actually are frugal spenders. They have now amassed £110 million as a balance and they're only giving us £26.4 million to go out and spend. For a team that has got that amount of money in the bank, you thought they might have been a bit more forwards in terms of offering us a transfer budget but they know what they want to spend and they are spending wisely they give us a wage budget of one million pounds once again and to round out season two let's have a little look at our seasonal best 11 so ramiro is still our goalkeeper rico zubaldia el estondo and garathabal are our back four now i personally would have put rodon in there but it's gone with zubaldia we have zubimende and turrientes as our two midfielders Ariathabal on the left we have mendez on the right Kubo is now playing in behind Colombo, who is our main striker. So we have had a really good second season. And once again, we have built upon the first season to go that step further. The next challenge, can we go and win La Liga? Let's jump to the end of season three and find out what happens next. Moving on to the end of season three, and as always, we're going to show you the important transfers both out and in that have happened in that season. The first player that we lost was Mohamed Ali Cho. I have to hold my hands up here. I did kind of forget about him. He starts the game, I think, in the B team. I did promote him, but it wasn't enough. He wanted to start more games, and obviously we had signed Colombo the season before. So £10.25 million took him to Italy. The other big transfer to happen was Bernat Torrientes. He went to Monaco. They came in with a £9.25 million bid and we decided to take the money. We moved him on to France. Obviously, with those players leaving the club, we needed to go out and sign some reinforcements. The first player that I went out and bought was a replacement for Mohamed Ali Cho. We paid Villarreal £7.5 million for Ferninho. We bought Alberto Maliero from Las Palmas for £7.25 million. As a rotation option, we went out and signed Mauricio Pellegrino's son, Matteo. He can come in, he can play as a makeshift striker, can also play from the wide right. The final big money signing of season three was a centre-back. He is Caleb Acoli. He's 23 years old. He's Italian and he's another one of those centre-backs who looks like a bit of a powerhouse. He's six foot two, can slot in in our defensive line and I think he really will be an enhancement going forwards. So we've shown you the players that have left the club, introduced the new recruits. The next thing to ask is, can we build upon the start that we have had? We had a fourth place, we had a second place. Was the money that we spent well worth it? And is the team getting any better? And the answer to the question is yes, the team has developed now to the point where we can call ourselves La Liga champions for the first time in 43 years. Real Sociedad have got their hands on that trophy. If we break down the Liga Santander campaign, we can see we played 38, we won 29, drew 3, lost 6, had a goal difference of 63. And finished on 90 points. That put us three points clear of Real Madrid. Four points clear of Atletico. And seven points clear of last season's champions Barcelona. Looking at a few stats. Colombo got himself 30 goals. Mendes got a 7.51 average rating. Colombo got a 7.43 average rating. Mendes got 15 assists. And Kubo once again proving he's David Silva's replacement with 11 assists. Looking across the board, Champions League up next. We were knocked out in the round of 16 by Villarreal. But if we show you the competition, a little bit of a change now with the league phase. And we finished fifth in that and we qualified fifth. So we played eight, won six, drew one, lost one. We had an 11 goal difference and 19 points. If we then move on, we weren't in the knockout playoff round we went straight into the round of 16 where we were drawn against Villarreal and unfortunately over two legs we lost 2-1 on 
aggregate. Moving across, we have finally added the Copper Del Rey to our trophy cabinet too. So a domestic double on the season. We got lucky. We rode our luck quite a lot in the final. Drew 3-3, won it on penalties. It's still another trophy to add to the cabinet. And we played in the Super Copa de España once again. And we finished runners-up. We lost 3-1 to Valencia in that competition. So, a fantastic Season 3. Season's win La Liga. We won the Copa del Rey. We have now had a double. And once again, we are moving the club forwards and in the right direction. Going forwards into Season 4, once again, we can see that that bank balance is creeping up for the club. They are now worth £134 million and they have that overall balance in the bank. They have given us £35.5 million in a transfer budget to go out and improve the squad. And we have a wage budget of £1.3 million going forwards. A quick look then at our seasonal best 11 before we move on to season four shows that we now have Ramiro in goal still. Rico, Zubaldia, El Estondo and Garasabal. We have Zubamendi and Berg in the middle. Ariathabal, Kubo and Mendes as an attacking three and Colombo at the top of the pitch. Now obviously we have Rodon and Akoli that can go in in place of Zubaldia and El Estondo. But the fact El Estondo is still in the back shows that I was right at the start and he's one of the players we could have built upon. Uh, Zubamendi and Berg in the middle. I do think Zubamendi will be overtaken by Johansson soon, but obviously it's an area that he's still looking a little bit weak, so maybe that's an area that we can improve going into season four. Other than that, top of the pitch, Colombo is fine. Don't think we need a striker. And in terms of creative players, we will only buy those if the right one comes along for the right money. So let's see what happens as we jump forwards to the end of season four. We have now jumped to the end of Season 4. Luckily for us, we managed to keep the bulk of our squad together. We didn't have any major transfers in terms of players leaving the club. We had a few loans and a few lower price transfers, but nothing really of note. So we're going to kick straight off with players that have joined the club. The first one that we signed was Lyle Abada. We picked him up for £35 million from Celtic. Now, I did say that we would only sign the players that we needed in the attacking options if the price was right. And knowing previously what Lyle Abada is capable of in this game it was a no-brainer for 35 million pounds the only other major signing that we made in season four was brian gill we paid tottenham 9.5 million pounds for his services and this one really is more about versatility than it is about quality he's a good player don't get me wrong but the fact he can play in so many different positions really was appealing and also the fact that he's actually just a squad player didn't really want anything more or less so we have just added him on and i think he's a player that we can just slot in where we need him and certainly in rotation games so those are the two players that we have have bought in once again can we build upon what we had in season three can we go a step further in the champions league was the money that we spent well worth it Unfortunately, we couldn't defend a La Liga title. We have had a good season, but it just wasn't one that ended in much glory. If we look at La Liga Santander first, we can see that we have now surrendered the title back to Barcelona. We did finish second, though. We ran them close, played 38 games, 126, drew seven, lost five at a 55 goal difference and finished on 85 points and even though we finished seven points behind them we were actually banged there until the end of the season where we just had a few wobbles and we just let them get away from us and we couldn't reel them back in we also finished level on points with atletico madrid on 85 and we once again beat real madrid by four points lorenzo colombo continued his great goal scoring form from last season he managed to get himself 40 goals in a season he had a 7.51 average rating and Ariatha Bell got 11 assists. So disappointing not to be able to retain our La Liga title. We did though make progress in the Champions League. We got all the way to the semi-finals in that, losing to eventual winners Liverpool. If we go into the league phase, we can see that we finished 12th this time. We played eight. We won four. We drew two. We lost two. We had a seven goal difference and we had 14 points. Uh, Colombo getting himself 15 more goals in that competition. And El Estondo there getting himself seven yellow cards. We did retain the Copa del Rey though. We can add another one of those to the trophy cabinet. If we go into the third round, we find us playing against Linens. We beat them 5-1 on in the fifth round. In the fourth round, sorry, uh, we played against Las Palmas. We beat them 2-0 in the 
quarterfinals played against Salta Vigo. We beat them 1-0 in the semi-finals. We played against Real Madrid. We beat them 3-1 on aggregate. And in the final, we managed to beat Barcelona 2-0 to retain the Copa del Rey. We also played in the Supercopa de España and we managed to win that. We beat Real Madrid 3-1 in that final and we managed to win that for the first time. So even though we took a step back in terms of La Liga, we did make it to the semi-finals of the Champions League. We do add two domestic trophies, albeit one major, one not. A look at the finances going into the final season of the Revolution show that the club now have a balance of £181.2 million. They have given us £45.5 million to go and spend in the final season and we have a wage budget now of £1.7 million. Going into the final season of the Revolution, our seasonal best 11 from season 4 looks like this. So we still have Ramiro in goal. We now have Rico, Akoli, El Estondo and Garathabal as our back four. Zubamendi and Berg are in the middle. We have Oriathabal, Kubo and Mendes. And then we have Colombo at the top of the pitch. Lorenzo Colombo has been an absolute revelation since we have signed him. He has got 70 league goals in the past two seasons, which is absolutely fantastic. We still have Berg and Zubamendi as a midfield partnership. So we probably still do need to upgrade in the middle of the park. Although I do feel that our assistant manager is quite loyal to Zubamendi. I do think Johansson probably should step into there. And we still still have players like Cole Palmer, Brian Gill, they're on the bench. Lila Barda couldn't even get into our seasonal best 11 and neither did Noah Okafor. So there's plenty of players with potential at the club. It's just whether they can oust some of the old first teamers that are there currently and see if we can progress in season five using those players. So let's jump to the end of season five and see what happens in the final season of the Real Sociedad Revolution. We have now jumped to the end of Season 5 and that means that the Real Sociedad 5 season revolution is complete. Once again we have managed to keep hold of all of our first teamers which means we didn't sell anybody for big money. We had another few loans and a few youth team players leave the club but nothing of note in terms of players going out. However we did invest in the playing squad once again for the first team. And the first player that we ended up buying for big money was Karim Adeyemi. Don't really need to say too much about him other than we paid Dortmund and just £25 million for his services. He's an absolute steal. The next player that we signed in Season 5 was Pablo Tour. We paid Barcelona £6.5 million for his services. 24 years old, Spanish, can play as a central midfielder or as an attacking midfielder in the centre. And the final player that we signed in the five-season revolution at Real Sociedad was Siva Mansverk. He's a player that I tried to sign earlier on in the revolution and he ended up joining PSG's under-19s, which was a shame. But in season five, he was available on the transfer list for just £2.5 million. We went in and snapped him up because I think he's an absolute bargain. So with those three players, our squad is complete and the fifth season is now done. Once again, were the players that we invested the money in worth it? And did we improve on season four? Once again, we find ourselves top of La Liga and we are champions of Spain. Real Sociedad waited 43 years for one trophy, then they get two in three seasons. If we break that campaign down by looking at La Liga Santander, we can see we finished top by playing 38. We won 26. We drew 10. We lost two. Had a goal difference of 64. Finished on 88 points and that puts three points clear of last season's champions Barcelona. It put us 17 points clear of Real Madrid and an even further gap to the rest of the league. Colombo got himself another 26 goals so that's now 96 in three seasons. And Cole Palmer got himself a 7.32 average rating. Ramiro kept 19 clean sheets. Moving across to the Champions League. Now, this is one area where if I could do it again, I would try to improve. We have obviously had a good La Liga Santander five season span. But in terms of the Champions League, we only qualified for it in season two. And then we haven't been able to really progress. We got to the semi-finals, but this time around, knocked out in the quarters. Once again, breaking it down in terms of the league phase. We finished 10th. We played 8, won 5, drew 1, lost 2. 
at a six goal difference and 16 points on the board. That put us through into the knockout playoff round. Uh, we managed to play Atletico. We beat them 4-2 on aggregate. And then we come up in the round of 16 against Arsenal. Beat them 2-1 on aggregate before coming up against PSG where we lost 5-0 on aggregate. Colombo did get himself another 13 goals in the Champions League. Moving across to the Copa del Rey. Now we had won this competition the last two seasons. Unfortunately this time we didn't. Uh, Betis were the winners. We start off at the third round. Played against Sabadell. We beat them 3-1 in the fourth round. We played against Burgos. We beat them 4-0. In the quarterfinals, played against Osasuna. We won 2-1 in extra time. Then in the semifinals, we ended up losing to Betis uh, on away goals. Yeah, so Betis won on away goals after we drew 3-3 in the two legs. And then they went on to beat Real Madrid in the final. Okafor got four goals there. He had an 8.06 rating in that competition. And we finished runners-up in the Supercopa de España. Once again, losing to Barcelona in the final of that. So, a sterling fifth season, final season, where we have won La Liga Santander once again. We did finish as runners-up in the Supercopa de España. And we got to the semi-finals of the Copa del Rey. The only real disappointment was in terms of the Champions League. If we were to continue the save on behind the five years, this is what would happen in terms of the finances. So the club would have £159 million in the bank. They would give us £47.5 million as a transfer budget. And there would be £2.1 million now as a wage budget. Obviously, we're not going to go past the five seasons. So any new manager that comes in would inherit the club in a really, really good financial state. A final look in season five at our seasonal best 11 and once again you can see that our assistant manager really does stick with the players from the start of the game so we've got Ramiro in goal Gil now at left back Akoli, El Ostondo and Garatha Bell so two out of the four that were in the original back four managed to get through to the end of the five seasons Zubimendi in the middle he's still in there despite Johansson pushing him for positions Pablo Tor coming into the squad uh, Sander Berg coming in though and he has played really well so he's deserving of the BWM role on the left Ariatha Bell on the right Mendes in behind is Kubo and at the top of the pitch is Colombo if I show you Lorenzo Colombo's stats they are absolutely insane so looking at this from when he joined the club here he scored 15 the first season then 30 40 26 if we go one further and look at his seasonal stats 17 goals in the first season 36 in the second 61 goals in a 57 game campaign is awesome and then in the last campaign 44 goals from 53 games he's been an absolute bargain for 10.75 million pounds and an absolute steal the last thing to look at then before we round it up as always is the club info page let's go and look at the overview of the history we started off they had two la liga santander trophies we have now added two more 2025 and 2027 puts them on to four in terms of the copa del rey 25 and 26 back to back uh, wins of the Copa del Rey means that they have added two more of those we obviously didn't play in the Liga Smart Bank which is the league below but we did add another Super Cup to that title that they already had in 1982 in 2026 so we have had an absolutely fantastic five years revolutionising Real Sociedad going out buying some brilliant players to develop for the first team learning that our assistant manager really is biased towards the players at the start of the game but even that in itself is quite impressive that we have had a number of players who were in the squad at the start stick with us and also get through to the end of the five-year revolution players that we added on obviously switching in and Lorenzo Colombo is an absolute gem of a find I haven't signed him on any of these kinds of revolution type videos before i think he is one that i will be looking at in the future right then if you're still with me at this point of the video firstly a big thank you secondly if you don't mind hitting that like and subscribe button to help the channel i really really do appreciate it watching the channel grow across the past couple of months has been fantastic it's all down to people like yourself who watch the videos and interact with the videos and again i cannot thank you enough before you go don't forget to check out the rest of the channel we have other things such as 
Masters, Wonder Kids, tactic testing including non-league, there are hints, tips, tutorials, a little bit of something for everybody right here on the channel. But for this one, I'm going to round it up there. A big thank you for watching. I'll see you on another video very, very soon.